Well, as you might have gathered, it's night time. And you might hear the distant bangs and cracks of fireworks. Sounds like Beirut in the 1970s and 1980s back home. So I've come up here. Evening. I'm on my way into the Sherwood Forest. Just going to have a wander around, see what's on the trees. Maybe, like the other night, there might be a glowworm larva knocking about. And that'd be nice to see again, because that would be, I think, the latest that we've ever had a hunting larva. So, without further ado, I'm going to head off that way and see if we can find anything. Now then, where am I again? It's another breezy but very mild evening. Temperature currently, when I just got out of the car, was still at 12 centigrade. And depending on which forecast you believed, it was either going to be cloudy or there was going to be a bit of rain. At the moment, it is 95% cloud. Which is good, so it's nice to have a mild evening. That's one of the reasons why I've come up, really, because you never know what you can find. But I'm now at the first point of call. And this is an old, ancient, long dead that's in Section J on our old glowworm survey route. It's on the way up to the centre tree at Clipston Old Quarter. And I'm going to show you just how much life appears on these trees after dark. Now, it's common stuff, mostly, but we'll have a look and just yeah, have a look through it and see if there's anything perhaps a little bit more interesting. Not sure how much you'll see, but it's pretty covered in... Well, what's mostly Porcelio scaber, but there are lots of the Tenebrinid Nalassus leviotostriatus. It's amazing how much comes out on these old trees after dark. Still pretty much all Porcelio scaber. And here's Nalassus leviotus striatus now making a run for it. But what there is on here is a particularly nice spider. It's one of the old weavers. And it's Noctenia umbratica, and I'll show it you now. And here she is. This is a female. And these are very flat bodied and they're flat bodied for a reason because in the forest like here they typically spend the daylight hours under loose bark or in the cracks and crevices of the trees now you'll get these at home you often get them on fences and fence posts 
and in which case, if, it's on, if they're on your fences at home, you won't know about them unless you purposely look on an evening. And that's when they come out, make a new web, and catch their prey. But during the day in your gardens, this spider, which does get large, larger than this individual, you can see there's my grubby finger look. So you can see how big she is. And I'll chuck a photo in here. So these are a large or weaver. Some females can get particularly large. And they're quite long lived as well. These will go through the winter as an adult. And if you lift bark frequently, as I often do during the winter months, you'll often come against come up against these. Tucked away, flattened to the underside of the bark. But say in your garden, these will be under the top of your fence where the lats overlap but this is Noctenia umbratica sometimes called the walnut or weaver don't ask me why Just having a wander and a look along the paths, which is not something I always do using torchlight. Now, you don't use torchlight for surveying for glowworm larvae, which this time of year and most of the year are nocturnal hunters anyway. You rely solely on walking the paths and tracks in the dark. And picking up the larva or the presence of the larva during one of the larva's regular haunting glows. Although the haunting glows produced by glowworm larva aren't consistent, some larva don't always glow. Some don't glow for days, some don't glow for weeks, and then others are excessive glowers, proper show offs, really. But the technique we always employed when looking for glowworm larva to count and measure in the different areas we always did in darkness it's the only way you can do it but you can use a torch to look for carabids and various other invertebrates that are actively out on the path and that don't glow so I'd best get cracking All of Sherwood's older trees, and in particular the ancients and dead ancients like this, are covered in holes of a certain size, usually about three to four mil. And these are the holes of a rather infamous beetle, known for being the harbinger of doom. Apparently, these are the exit holes of the Death Watch Beetle, which was notorious in days gone by, shall we say, and at times when people were laid on the deathbed. Occasionally, the furniture that was surrounded the dying were made by trees that were infected by the larva of the Death Watch Beetle. Or the larva of the Death Watch Beetle got in in the first place. And it was said that the beetle got its name, that it derived its name from the fact 
that the male Death Watch beetle makes a tapping sound, apparently in an attempt to attract a female. So this tapping was almost like a clicking and it was reputed to be like the ticking of the clock. Hence Death Watch beetle. And say the trees at Sherwood are riddled with such exit holes as these, but the beetle itself is quite a difficult find. It took Dillis and myself many years before we eventually found it. And it was early in a year. It was under what was a layer of bark at one time on a tinder dry oak. Have seen it since by doing this kind of thing. Coming up the woods, up the forest at silly hours, and have found it open, openly wandering on the trunks of these ancients. Talking of wandering ancient, let's make a move. Lights out. Now here's another chance to see the walnut orbeer or Noctenia unbratica. And you might be able to, to make out how flat this spider is. You'll have seen your typical garden cross spiders and other old weavers and how fat bodied they get. Well this one doesn't. It gets reasonably fat bodied but flat fat bodied. It's a well marked species and is a lot more common than may be thought and certainly by doing nocturnal surveys and wanderings like this you realise just how common it is. So this is an Octenia umbratica or the or walnut or weaver. And I'll see if I can get a a shot from the side to show you just how flat this little lady is. And there she is, look, you, you can see her, she's just there, the end of my thumb, finger. And you can see how well adapted this spider is for living under tight fitting bark. commonly found under bark during the winter months. These are long-lived spiders and are common in urban areas as much as they are in more rural areas and woodlands. So that's a nice, a nice little find. So this is a carabid larva, a ground beetle larva, and judging by the size, this one's approaching two inches long. And imagine this might be something like Terosticus niger, which is one of our largest carabids. A ferocious predator, and a, it's the first time I've seen one actually hunting out on the forest floor. There we go. These carry fearsome jewels. Often end up pupated under logs or under loose bark where they form a lovely crafted earthen cell in which the adult eventually emerges and spends the winter till the spring. There you can see the jaws at the front. Didn't expect to find one of these. Shows you how mild it is. There's even a little staphylinid roof beetle behind it tucked in amongst the litter there.
But the larva of the violet ground beetle, or the two violet ground beetles that there are in Sherwood, are enormous and considerably bigger than this. This is big enough. Was Aetrosticus nigus the most likely? But it could also be Terosticus madidus, which is another common and large roof beetle found at Sherwood. And off it goes. Walking for a bit of supper. And that's the forest floor. I suppose I need to get up now, don't I? That's easier said than done for a start. It's windy. stood under a sign telling me which way to go after some recent videos you might tell me where to go a bit more directly and which way Coventry is from here I don't know we'll take a wild guess and say that way Well, that's another nocturnal wander nearly done with. It's all right, I'm fixing one of my torches. Oh, Dawny Owl. You can tell how windy it is. And there's bits of clear sky. Oh, really windy now. So I'm going to have a steady head back anyway. Found a few bits, nothing special, but the point is to get out. While it's mild, you never know what you're going to find. I enjoy finding common stuff as much as I do finding rare stuff. I like accumulating records and then leaving them for generations to come. But what I don't want generations to come to have is me whiskey that I've got at home. That's solely for me. I hope it's still there when I get back. <laughs>